Hello everyone, I'm Happy Caldwell, and thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Live. A little different program today. You've seen my guest on her show, Faith Builders, right here on VTM. Pastor Michelle Steele is here with me today to talk about her new book, Escaping Hell. And here's the book, and you're going to hear her version of this, and you're going to be able to get your copy of this book, and I'd recommend you get it. Stay tuned. She's going to share with you her testimony, her extraordinary story, how she died twice and escaped death and hell. Jesus took her from death to a living, victorious life, and He can do the same for you. So stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. Michelle, it's been a long time coming to get you on this program for you to share your testimony. I've seen you on other programs, Escaping Hell, uh, a true story. And I, I want to tell our viewers, you know, uh, Jeannie and I have known Philip and Michelle for a number of years now. But <clears throat> when I uh, read the proof of this before you printed and published it, I told Jeannie, I said, now, <laughs> we, we don't know the whole story of this uh, girl, how what she went through. We've only known them as pastors of Faith Builders Church here in Little Rock and one in DeSoto, Kansas. And uh, we've seen the, the victorious side of their life. But I wanted her to come and share the whole story. Well, maybe not the whole story. We don't have time for that. <laughs> but I want you to share uh, what happened to you and just a little preview here of uh, you know your your story is it's it's not like a lot of these stories where I was in a dysfunctional family and grew up abused and all this. No, you grew up in a nice family in a nice part of the country, and uh, <laughs> but then everything began to change. So I'll let you pick it up now and uh, briefly share what your book Escaping Hell is all about. Well. You're correct. I did grow up in a very affluent part of the Nashville, a suburb of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> when I, you know, had everything, when I, when I went to get my driver's license, I drove a Mercedes Benz in my driver's license test. I had seemingly everything going for me, but on the inside, there was this destruction that was working. And so the first half of this book, Escaping Hell, talks about the life that I was living, that destruction, that from a child I was molested, I had things that happened to me that put me in a position to self-destruct, to hate myself, ended up running away uh, as a teenager on the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, and I uh, ended up uh, becoming a prostitute, addicted to drugs. I'm giving a, a, the fast track story yeah. here just at the onset because I... Um, I want to be able to, to get into what the Lord has for us to get into today. So that, that part of the story is there. But also in the book is what God has taught me to help me get to where I am today. Yeah, that's, and so, that's, the, that's the big point that I want you to get to because you've overcome some things that a lot of people don't. And, uh, you know, I, 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 when Jeannie and I read this, we thought, you know, that'd make a great movie. <laughs> It's it's so strong, and and so many people uh, fall victims to this kind of stuff. But it's the it's the turnaround that you made. Give us a little bit of history. You and you and Philip uh, met and got married. Now he was raised Pentecostal, wasn't he? He was. He yeah. grew up in a preacher's family. He, his parents were evangelists and uh, the power of God in their ministry. And so he grew up with the call of God, knowing there was a call of God on his life, got saved when he was eight. Uh, when, um, when we met, I had been saved just under a year. And so I wow. was, I had a prayer list of who I was believing God for. I, I, I don't want to mess this up again. <laughs> And so I had a list of what I was believing for in a husband. And there were other men in the church, but they didn't fit the criteria on my <laughs> list. And so if they didn't praise harder than I praised, if they didn't know the word better than me, if they, I needed someone who could lead my home. And so yeah. 
uh, God brought us together and um, we began to serve the Lord and he recognized the call to be a faith builder. God spoke to him on Hebrews 11:3 that he was, it says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And so God said, I want you to be busy building people's faith and framing their world by the word of God. To bring hope to people that have been through similarities of, of your early life. Uh, you know, how, how did Philip um, respond to your, quote, a similar Bonnie and Clyde lifestyle, you know, how did he, how did he uh, adjust to that? Did he realize what he was getting into? Or like, like Dave Meyer said, when he prayed uh, and he met Joyce, he said, I want to marry somebody that I can help. You know, it was a total difference in, in your, your past and his, but I've known the both of you for many years now, and he's a powerful man of God. And you all, you all together, a dynamic duo pastoring two churches, one in Kansas, one in Little Rock. Uh, how, how did he handle this at the very beginning of your marriage? Well, when I got born again, you know, I had been brought, someone brought me to the church and I, that, that I got saved in, and it was his parents who were running the revival. Oh. And yeah. so he was witness he wasn't there during that time that I got saved, but he was witness to what the power of God had done in my yeah, life. Okay. It was something that his family had seen, his his parents had were witness when the anointing of God, you know, when I came in, I was I was still addicted to drugs trying to get myself cleaned up. And they took me to this revival, the people who had um, prayed with my first husband who had died of a drug overdose. They took me to the revival, and I was so messed up, Pastor. I <laughs> slept through the church service. Oh, I was trying to get myself cleaned up to come to God because this was after the overdose and, yeah. and different things and, and the, <laughs> the experience of dying and leaving my body and, and uh, experiencing the, the hell. And, and so uh, it was, I, I knew I needed God. I knew I needed God, and I was trying to find God, and I'd gone to the thrift store and bought a, a Bible for 25 cents at the <laughs> wow. thrift store, yeah. and I, would, I was on this methadone program trying to get myself off drugs, and I would, I would fall asleep reading the Bible. I would fall asleep driving the car. Wow. I totaled three cars wow. trying to get myself off drugs, and so they, taught, they brought me, and I was asleep during the service, and the preacher <laughs> woke me up during the church service to ask me, girl, do you want help? Wow. And when I stood up, the power of God met me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want help. And I had never been around a, a service where the power of God moved. Mm -hmm. And so when I got up on the floor, I was a little bit upset because I thought the preacher knocked me down. <laughs> <laughs> I was laid out on the floor under the power of God. Yes. And when, when I, before I could be angry, I realized I was sober for the first time in years wow. and I was in my right mind and I gave my life to the Lord. So his parents had witnessed that extreme yeah. turnaround in my life. He was witness <clears throat> to it. And so they were just thankful for what God had done. Amen. For me. I guess so. Now <clears throat> you experienced uh, hell and d died twice. Was that a result of drugs? It you was cocaine overdoses in okay. both times that I died. What did you feel like when you felt hell, escaping hell? Were you, were you close to it? Were you in it? How did you feel? When I, the second overdose, you know, the first overdose, I had just been doing drugs for days and um, the person who was giving me the drugs pulled it up into a syringe and gave me his cocaine and my cocaine by mistake wow. all at one time. And that overdose, mm -hmm. when they brought me back to life, he didn't know how to do CPR, so he took me into a shower, turned the cold water on, and beat me in the chest until I came back to life. Wow. It was about a, an hour before I could speak. Mm -hmm. I just was in a daze. And he, he was asking me, do you know your name? Do you know what year it is? Who are you? Who am I? And I couldn't answer. 
And when I finally did, the first thing I asked for was more cocaine. Wow. That was the first <laughs> overdose. It was, it was so far. I've often wondered why drug addicts, alcoholics, whatever, <clears throat> they know what's happening to them. They know what's going on. Why, why do they want more? The addiction has to control not only the flesh, but the mind. And so you, you ask for more, uh, <clears throat> but then God delivered you from all of that. You got saved. And did nearly going to hell change your perception of spiritual things? Or? It did. Pastor, when I died that second time, I had, again, been doing cocaine for like three days with no food, mm -hmm. no water, maybe, you know, just barely enough to keep going on, had not slept, and I couldn't feel it. And mm -hmm. so I kept telling the person, put more cocaine in my spoon, put more in my spoon. And so I was just chasing that every high, trying to chase that feeling. And so when I, I pulled it all up into my syringe and I put it into my arm, before I could even untie the belt from my arm, my heart stopped. Mm. But this was so different. I left my body mm. and I stood in front of a skull. It wasn't a skeleton. It, in, it was an, a skull that was as tall as I am mm. tall. And in that moment, it was so clear. Before then, I had just been in this confusion of addiction and destruction with all of this, not, never really thinking clearly. Yeah. But in that moment, I knew hell was real. Mm. I don't think I'd ever come to that place of reality before yeah. that moment. Yeah. I'd made jokes about hell. I'm going to party with the devil in hell. You know, we sang songs about hell, all those rock songs, Highway to Hell, all the different just ridiculous things. But in that moment, it was very real and very clear. Hell is real and I don't want to go. Yeah. And I ran back to my body. That's the only way I can explain it. I just started running and I ran. And when I hit my body, when, when I got back in my body, I began fighting the person who was doing CPR. And when they let me up, I ran because mm. I was still running from those hands of darkness trying to pull me into hell. Yeah. And I ran two blocks in the rain in the projects mm. of East Nashville with the blood dripping down my arm because I didn't want to go to hell. It was a Sunday morning that I died in the back of a bar. Mm. And I went to a church that Sunday night mm. to try to find God. You know, folks, you might know somebody that needs this book or you might or need it yourself. But I would encourage you to get it. You can you can order the book um, Escaping Hell uh, from Michelle's website, faithbuilders.com. Is that correct? Faithbuilders. Buildfaith.net. Buildfaith.net. Do you have any of that information to put up on the, the screen? Yeah, there it is, buildfaith.net. Um, and you can order the book, uh, $16. Uh, but I want to encourage you to get I already sent one of these to one of our viewers that had written me and said they were facing the same difficulties. And I sent her one of uh, Michelle's books. Now, let's go to the other side of this. Now, what uh, Michelle learned out of this. And, of course, she's a, a pastor. She's a Bible teacher. There are five fundamental things <clears throat> that helped you stay on track and uh, God's plan for your life. Um, and, and the fundamental is you said one of the uh, fundamentals is meet the new you. What does that mean to meet the new you? Pastor, I knew so little <clears throat> about the Bible when I got saved. Yeah. And I was so different because I was a new creature. Yeah. And one of the first scriptures God gave me was from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, new creature. creature. Old things are passed away. All things are created new. And that became reality to me. I, I fed on that. I meditated on that. I went back to that because... To old things to be passed away and all things to be created new 
was, was a life changer for me. And I needed to find out about the new me in Christ. And when we get born again, we're so different. We've yeah. got to have the, <clears throat> the owner's manual to figure out, yeah. <laughs> the manufacturer's manual to figure out what we can do. You know, I know a lot of people who have the most expensive cell phone that's available, but they don't know how to do very much with it, right? Yeah. And we have the most <clears throat> intricate uh, creation that God has made us. We are created in his image and in his likeness, the righteousness of God in Christ. So I had to go to the word to find out who I am. Wow. And one of the things that I had to identify is that I needed my death certificate to prove the old Michelle was dead. And God led me to find my death certificate in Galatians chapter two, verse 20. If any, that I'm crucified I'm with Christ. Christ. Wow. Nevertheless, I live. And then I needed to find my burial. Where was I buried? Wow. And Romans 6 <clears> says <throat> that I'm buried together with Christ in baptism. So I'm, I'm, the old Michelle is dead. I have proof of it. Whenever the devil comes back and says, you're just the same old loser yeah, you've always right. been. No, no, no. I, that woman died <laughs> yeah. and she is buried. Yeah. And then I have my birth certificate, which is also in Romans, that if I'm resurrected into the newness of life. But that became my identification. And so when I need to do business in the natural, I've got to have my identification to open a bank account. Right. I've got to have it to, to buy a house, to board a plane. All of the things that we need to do in the kingdom right. require the right identification. Well, I can see why you call these fundamentals, too. That, that fundamental n number one was the new you. Yes. Fundamental number two is learn to hear God in his word. Fundamental number three, apply the blood correctly. Fundamental four, put on the mind of Christ. Learn to follow God's spirit. So your, your um, what, what do they call it when they get people off drugs or off alcohol? It's um, your, your, uh, your, your plan to get off of these addictions. Recovery. Recovery. So your recovery was more than just getting the monkey off your back and your recovery included a, the new you. Yes. Who, who am I now? Yes. And I can see, uh, Michelle, without this, I can see why so many people fail. I know a young man who I don't think very many people knew that he was a alcoholic. He, he was a businessman, very successful and He was in our church. He did all kinds of things for us, for Jeannie and I. <laughs> But he was addicted to alcohol and, he, and drugs, and he couldn't shake it. He could not get over it. No, nobody knew. Well, one day he just took a pistol and put it to the side of his head and blew his brains out, and he left a suicide note. I preached his funeral, and he said, I decided to take Jesus up on his offer of a new life. Wow. Now, unfortunately, he went the wrong way. That's not what Jesus was talking about. Yes. But he never could rebuild. He tried. He never could rebuild the new you. That's what's so powerful uh, about this book, folks. Okay. Um, I, I've, those, those fundamentals are all in your uh, index there of the chapters in the book. Now, we're running out of time, so I want to uh, go to this one. You, you, the fifth fundamental is learning to follow God's Spirit. How has that helped you stay on track? Uh, because somebody that's struggling with their past, the trauma, uh, what would you recommend to them? What does that mean, learning to follow God's Spirit? Well, when in fundamental number two was learn how to follow God or hear from God in His Word, right. which is a precursor to learning how to follow God's Spirit. We are so new in how he created us. We need the Holy Spirit to yeah. understand the things that aren't thus saith the Lord written in the Bible. There are specifics for our life, details for our life, things that we encounter. Uh, you know, one of the things when I was raising my teenagers that was such a benefit was that the Holy Spirit would show me things that my natural mind didn't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> things that they didn't want my natural mind to know. Right. But in, in our life, that we, 
the help we have through the Holy Spirit, how he shows us things. You know, and I, I found myself in a place where, and it was right before we signed the contract to start our program, Faith Builders with Philip and Michelle Steele here on VTN. When we, uh, it was during a time that there was a lot of financial chaos going on in the earth and in um, our church, we had some people who backslid and went different ways. And I went and got a job, a, a job working in addition to what I was doing at the church. And I, I was on my way to that job and I was crying. <laughs> With a worship song, I thought I was worshiping. <laughs> I, I was pretending to worship, but I was sorry. It was, woo, yeah, Lord, help yeah. me. And in that moment of me, it was emotional, and I was, I was not responding spiritually. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, if you don't start act, applying the things of faith that you've learned, you're going to, and he showed me these dominoes all falling Wow. He said, you're going to affect, it'll go, it'll have a domino effect and make you wonder if you ever got saved. Do you think that's where, uh, that's what happens to some people that never come out on the other end victorious? Do you think they, their dominoes start falling and they, they are discouraged and they fail to cross over? They just give up because they think I can't ever make it. Yes, I think they try to do it in their self, in yeah. their head, in their flesh, in their own ability. Yeah. And we, without the word, I, I like to tell people because people will say, you don't look like that woman who went through those things. <laughs> and I yeah. say, this is the word built version. Yes. The word built. That's good. You know, they say built Ford, Ford yeah. tough, but we need to be built by the word. Yeah. And it's the word that showed me how to cast down imaginations. It's the word that showed me who I am. It's the word that showed me how to apply the blood to deal with the guilt and to deal with the shame. Now, address and talk to somebody that's struggling with their past, their shame, their guilt, their trauma. Is it too late for them to get free from that? It's never too late. Mm -hmm. What God has for you is an exceedingly good plan. And if you, first of all, yield to him and allow Jesus to be your Lord, you know, part of what I was dealing with all those years of addiction was cocaine was Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. It drove me. It told me what to do with my money. It told me what to do with my time. It was a slave master who drove me almost to the point of destruction. But the day I made Jesus the Lord of my life was the day that addiction stepped out of the picture and Jesus began to lord over me with his love, with his peace, with his joy, with his blessing. And that's the first step is to accept him as the Lord and then submit to him. And the way we submit to him is submit to his word. Because if Jesus is Lord and he's the word made flesh, if Jesus is Lord, then his word will govern us. It'll govern our thinking. It'll govern our actions, our attitudes. Yeah. So it's never too late. <clears throat> it just takes that step of yielding your life to him. We've got about five minutes, and I want to tell the people how they can get your book again. But I, would you pray with some people that may be watching right now that are struggling with this? Hey, you know, we think everybody that goes through what you went through and millions go through addictions or whatever, we think they're all out on the street and uh, uh, homeless or whatever, but they're not. They're in uh, office buildings and and um, they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're um, uh, professional people. They, they could be watching right now. Yes. Encourage them that they've got to make this confession of their faith in Jesus and uh, how you got saved. And that was the beginning of where you are now. So just look into your camera and lead them to Jesus right now. Well, I want to encourage you. The decision is not a hard decision. It is just the opening of your heart to accept him. And the way that you do is just believe in your heart that what Jesus did on the cross, he did for you. The blood that he shed, he shed for you. The life that he sacrificed, he did that in your place to help you be free from sin, from sickness, from addiction, from all of those things that have been tormenting your life. And in this moment, just open your heart and say, I believe 
Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin. And I believe God raised him from the dead. Jesus, be my Lord. I accept you as the one who governs my life. I yield my life to you. Teach me how to walk free into the fullness of what you have chosen for my life. If you have prayed that prayer, he has already responded to you and brought his life into your heart. Amen. Were you saved in Nashville? I was. I was too. I was saved in Nashville. And there was a great move of God in Nashville back in the uh, early 70s. And I want you to be saved. And if you prayed that prayer with Michelle right now, you're just beginning your new life. Meet the new you. <laughs> and you get into a good word uh, church and you um, get into the word yourself. Here's how you can get your copy of Escaping Hell. Uh, this is Michelle's book and uh, you can go on to builders, uh, excuse me, buildfaith.net is their website. Uh, and you can get your copy. In fact, uh, here's Michelle to tell you a little bit more about it. Watch this and I'll be right back. This true story of my life, we were only able to cover bits and pieces of it in the broadcast. I want to encourage you to get the book, get the book and read through and apply the principles because what God did in my life, He desires to do for anyone who will open up their heart and reach out to Him for the help that He so desires to give in their life. God's plan for you is a plan for good. Michelle, thank you so much for being on the program. It's my honor, Pastor, always. And you can watch um, their program right here on VTN. It's called Faith Builders. It's uh, Monday at 9.30 a.m., Fridays at 2.30 a.m., and Sundays at 12.30 a.m. So I want to encourage you to get your copy. Thank you, Michelle, for coming by and thank sharing you. this. And this is going to be a blessing to a lot of people. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, thanks for joining me here on Arkansas Live. And I look forward to uh, uh, seeing you again as we start to continue more of our series on understanding these present times. Uh, give our regards to uh, Philip. And, I will. Uh, thank you. And thank you for watching. And don't forget, wherever you're watching, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.